We're pulling back the curtain on Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's latest Indo-Pacific tour, which has hit the taxpayer's pocket harder than a blizzard in mid-January. You've just opened your latest tax bill and found an extra line item Trudeau's tour expenses. That's essentially what's happened here, as reports have surfaced detailing a whopping $2 million dollar expenditure for a six-day international venture with a staggering $200,000 just on catering. Yes, you heard that right, a cool $200,000 that went straight from the treasury into fine dining and canips on the other side of the world. But before we delve further into the topic, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Also, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately, and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. This isn't just about fancy meals and first-class flights, it's about the vast sum of money spent on this tour and what it means for us, the taxpayers. We're talking about the hard-earned dollars of Canadian citizens, nurses, teachers, small business owners, and so many more being used in ways that many are starting to question. So what does a $2 million price tag on an official tour get you? Here's where the funds have reportedly been allocated. A whopping $200,000 was spent just on catering. That's a lot of whores de ovaries and fine dining for a six-day trip. Luxury hotels, first-class flights, and ground transportation all adding up to the lion's share of the budget ensuring the safety of the prime minister and his entourage doesn't come cheap. Salaries for accompanying staff and equipment needed for the trip. From event planning to unforeseen costs, the miscellaneous category often hides some surprising figures. The financial impact on each Canadian taxpayer might seem minimal when we talk about dollars and cents. However, if we look at the bigger picture, every cent counts. This money could potentially fund public services or contribute to reducing the national debt. With $200,000, how many student scholarships could be funded? How much could be invested in healthcare or affordable housing initiatives? These are the questions we should be asking, and they merit real answers. This is not just pocket change. It's a substantial amount that deserves scrutiny. Transparency is key, and taxpayers have a right to know where their hard-earned money is going. Did you know that even a fraction of this tour's cost could support small community projects that make a big difference in people's lives? Your thoughts? As we crunch these numbers, I want to hear from you. What do you think about this level of spending? Is it justified as part of state diplomacy or is it an indulgence at the taxpayer's expense? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. You're paying for a service, but you're not allowed to see the itemized bill. That's how many Canadians feel about the allocation of funds for official tours like this one. There's a shroud of secrecy that can lead to unnecessary and unchecked expenditures. We have to ask ourselves who really benefits from this lack of transparency. Every transaction would have a digital paper trail, accessible and understandable to the common citizen. Government departments would be more careful with budgets, knowing they'll face public questions. Policy decisions regarding spending would be more likely to align with the public interest. Transparency is a preventive measure now. If you're wondering how transparency can actually prevent wasteful expenditures, consider this when details of spending are clear. It's harder to justify excessive costs. No one wants to be the official who approved a $5,000 hotel room when the budget hotel down the road costs $150 a night. Public procurement processes become more competitive and efficient driving down prices and preventing cronyism. An informed public can push back against spending they perceive as frivolous, leading to more responsible decision-making. What kind of prime minister does this? Citizens are going through financial strain and Justin Trudeau is spending money on tours. Just thinking that hard-earned money being whisked away on posh plane meals or luxury accommodations. That's the reality when trips like this come with jaw-dropping price tags. But what does that mean for you and me? Could these millions have supported healthcare or education? Will our taxes climb to cover the cost of high-ticket travels? Are other sectors tightening their belts while the travel budget balloons? Let's not forget that the true cost of such spending is often hidden in the shadows of future budgets. Every dollar spent on lavish tours is a dollar not invested in public services and welfare programs. Think about the long-term effects strained healthcare systems could use a financial boost if even a fraction of the tour's budget was redirected there. Educational initiatives that could shape our future leaders might be getting shortchanged. Social welfare programs that keep the most vulnerable afloat may face cuts or stagnation. Canadians rely on these services daily, and proper funding is not just important, it's essential. Now, we know some will argue that official government tours are necessary for diplomacy and trade. They can open doors, create opportunities, and strengthen international ties. But at what cost? And can we achieve the same results without such hefty expenses? While we need to uphold Canada's presence on the world stage, it's vital to scrutinize every expense and ask ourselves, could this money serve a better purpose elsewhere? Under the spotlight are the voices of dissent echoing from corridors of power to the streets.
Political analysts are scrutinizing every dollar spent, while opposition leaders are not holding back their disapproval with a $200,000 catering bill. Could this money not have been better allocated to pressing domestic issues? Asks one analyst. An opposition leader chimes in when our healthcare system is under financial strain. Such lavish expenditures are hard to justify. What's your take on this juxtaposition of spending priorities? Let us know in the comments below, breaking down the ethical quandaries we must ask ourselves about the morality of using public money for what some perceive as personal or political gains. Is it morally acceptable for elected officials to partake in such expensive tours on the taxpayer's dime? How do we differentiate between necessary state expenses and luxurious excesses? Weigh in with your thoughts and help drive the conversation forward. Yet, this isn't merely about numbers, it's about perception, ethics, and accountability. With each passing tour, the Canadian public's expectation for frugality and transparency seems to be met with an ever-increasing bill. How do we reconcile the need for international diplomacy with prudent fiscal management? The news breaks about a $2 million dollar tour complete with a $200,000 catering bill. It's not just the wallet that feels the pinch, it's the public's faith in leadership. How does this expenditure reflect on the government's priorities? Does it align with the average citizen's expectations for fiscal responsibility? Perceived misuse of funds is like water on stone. It doesn't shatter trust immediately, but erodes it over time. Each report of extravagant spending acts like a droplet, and before long, you have a chasm where confidence once stood. This erosion of trust can decrease public engagement and participation in governance. Undermine the credibility of future government initiatives, regardless of their merit. Fuel cynicism and apathy towards political processes. Consider the visual metaphor of a bridge trust as the foundation that connects the government to its people. With each questionable expense, that bridge starts to show cracks. Can it be repaired? Well, it can't be repaired by Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. This is for sure. It's not all doom and gloom. There are shining examples of frugality we can learn from Scandinavian countries. Often use modest, functional accommodations and transport for their officials. New Zealand has been praised for its transparent disclosure of ministerial expenses, setting a benchmark for others to follow. Some governments have introduced electronic tracking of expenses to streamline processing and prevent fraud. These models provide a blueprint for how Canada could improve its handling of official tour expenses. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau could have followed one of these examples so that $2 million would not have been wasted. Since he did not do it, this showcases one thing only, and that is Prime Minister Justin Trudeau does not care about Canadians. So what can be done? Let's dive into possible policy changes and reforms aimed at ensuring responsible stewardship of taxpayer funds implement strict limits on the amount that can be spent on specific tour items from accommodations to transportation. Establish independent bodies tasked with reviewing and approving expenses related to official tours. Mandate detailed public reporting of all costs incurred during government tours, down to the last cent. Regularly conduct mandatory training for public officials on ethical spending and accountability. Since these ways are for the betterment of the country, there is a doubt that Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will follow these. As we wrap up our deep dive into the cost and controversy of Prime Minister Trudeau's recent $2M into a Pacific tour, it's crucial to reflect on the noteworthy points we've covered today. From the staggering $200,000 catering bill to the broader implications for taxpayer-funded government activities, every dollar spent tells a story of policy and priorities. We broke down the expenses, highlighting the lavish aspects of the tour that have sparked heated debates across Canada. We discussed the lack of transparency in spending and why it's vital for maintaining public trust in government. The direct impact on taxpayers was analyzed, putting into perspective how such spending could affect public services and welfare. Public perception and the erosion of trust were also key themes, as fiscal responsibility goes hand in hand with the electorate's confidence. That's all for today. See you next time. You can visit scoopcanada.com for more updates.